This is Home Sweet Arizona with your hosts, Chelsea and Brandon Hamilton. This husband and wife duo is sharing insight, ideas, and inspiration to help make your home amazing. Home Sweet Arizona is brought to you by Hamilton Ever After. Hello everyone, I'm Chelsea. And I'm Brandon, and once again, welcome to Home Sweet Arizona. We love when you join us, and in case you missed it, Home Sweet Arizona is a play on the phrase Home Sweet Home. So on our show, we're gonna cover all things like renovations, real estate, DIY, and so much more, including things to do in Arizona. And here's what you can expect today. We are bringing back our friend, realtor, designer, and home flipper, James the House Judge, to share the 2022 home design trends, and some of them might surprise you. And Thanksgiving is right around the corner, so we're going to introduce you to one of our favorite restaurants in the valley, allergy friendly and ready to cater to you this holiday. Plus, one of the oldest real estate listings in Arizona, we are taking you to Safford, Arizona. All of that and more, including some more of my bad jokes. Brandon, here's one for you. <laughs> this one's about the beautiful fall season that we love so much. What is fall's favorite place? Please. Piece. Piece of <laughs> the clothing. joke is not working. <laughs> Piece of clothing. Piece of clothing. Piece of clothing just became police. <laughs> That's what she does. It's fine. So what's <laughs> Fall's favorite piece of clothing? I don't know what. A Harvest. Oh, oh, wow. Perfect that I wore this today. And fitting. It's like you knew. <laughs> Well, many of you might be interested in dressing up your home and doing some upgrades. That's right. And though in life, it's always so important to be present. You might want to actually think ahead to the future when it comes to style trends, because you might be selling your home in a couple months. So you want to make sure it is ready to go. So it's time for a segment that we call Reno for Resale. Realtor, designer, and home flipper James the House Judge is here to let us pick his brain once again about the big home style trends that we will see in 2022. Welcome back to our show, James. We love when you join us. Thank you. Absolutely, Chelsea. Thanks so much for having me back on. I'm so excited to be here. All right, let's jump into this. For many people, home has become a sanctuary while also being a place to work. So we are hearing offices and working from home spaces will continue to be big. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be a huge thing. We started to see it in 2021, but 2022 is going to be a big year for focusing on the home. You know, so many people are spending so much more time at home. And so some of the, these secondary spaces have now really become a primary focus for the home. So home offices, workstations, Zoom calls, just like this now have become a primary space in the home. So it's super important to really see that becoming more of a trend because this is gonna be important, an important factor not only for the functionality of the home and for the user, but also ultimately for resale too. So some of the key things, you know, if your home doesn't already have an office, it's a big factor to be really looking at where a home office could be added. And can you make a space a little bit more private, maybe with some sliding barn doors? Spaces where you can really escape within your own home to still get work done while still having a great living space as well. So a lot of great solutions out there to really maximize your home living and home office spaces. So true and so important. Our entire house is essentially an office building. Yes. At this point, especially <laughs> our living room, you should see it, it's out of control. But anyway, another important trend, maximizing outdoor space. Of course it's Arizona, right? We always love our outdoor living spaces. But for so many people, this was kind of a secondary space. However, with more time at home, more people at home and working from home, that outdoor living space has become so important. And 2022 is not gonna be any different. It's all going to be about expanding that outdoor space and really capitalizing on that outdoor square footage. So really big outdoor living rooms, outdoor dining, extending that space with comfortable furniture. So furniture has been a really big factor for patios in a long, for a long time, but rather than that more metal, uh, all weather, harder, less comfortable furniture, we're seeing a lot more comfortable furniture that almost appears like it could be indoor, but it's for the outdoors and really makes outdoor living so comfortable. And with our perfect weather, who wouldn't want to just cozy up outside, watch the sunset? Absolutely. Plus, when you make it so inviting outside, you can connect, bringing nature indoors. So that will be big in 2022 as well. Let's talk about sustainability and revivals, thrift shopping options, and taking things that you already have and giving them a new life wait times for furniture can be months, almost a year out. 
And frankly, I'm impatient. I don't know about you, but like, I don't wanna wait that long. So instant gratification is a 2022 trend. And one of the key things we're gonna see is a lot of reuse. You know, can you take something you already have in your home, modify it to make it better? Because that way you can enjoy it right now instead of waiting six or seven months for that new end table to arrive. Also, thrift stores, they exist, they're fantastic. There are so many great finds. And so maybe that dresser that you really wanted to order, but you don't want to wait for is sitting at a thrift store. You can buy it, bring it home, sand it down, embrace some DIY in your life and get the same results, but with instant gratification. So, you know, to be reusing, recycling and modifying to make the most of some of these secondhand pieces, going to be a huge 2022 trend to really stylize and decorate your home. And in some cases, this can be a great way to save a lot of money, all in favor of the DIY. Yes. We're with it, we love it. <laughs> You're gonna love this next one, 2022 trend, texture. James, tell us more. Texture is something that has become a really big trend in 2021, and it's gonna carry over to 2022. So being that we're at home more often and looking at our walls, it's really great to see visual interest. So adding texture to the walls, to the ceiling, is becoming so popular and there's so many ways to achieve it. Wallpaper has made a huge comeback and a lot of that wallpaper has texture. So whether you're doing an entire room or a smaller space, wallpaper can be a great option and has become a super big trend. Not only that, but think about adding some trim work. This ceiling right there is a great example. We actually attached one by twos and ran them across the entire ceiling to add texture to this space. It adds so much visual interest and really brings a lot of warmth too. I ended up leaving this raw, but you can paint it as well. So whether it's the ceilings or on the walls, adding trim work to really create designs and then painting them creates so much texture. And right now that is going to be a huge trend that carries into 2022. So you're gonna probably need some texture in your life. Yes, we will. We are all about that texture. We have to talk about color now. For a while, we've been seeing green grow in popularity, but what are gonna be the big colors for 2022 and how can we incorporate them into our homes? Green is the color. So many color brands have announced their colors of the year. So Bayer, their color of the year is Breezeway, which is kind of a lighter green. Now, Benjamin Moore, they've announced that their color for 2022 is October Mist, which is a de definitely a more darker sage. So light to medium greens are gonna be so popular and this is been around for a while. Green's been making a slow comeback. It's been kind of coming up from behind, but in 2022, it's gonna take the lead. So we're gonna be seeing a lot more green on the walls and on cabinets and all over the home. And it's really gonna be an exciting color to kind of see transform because for so long, people have not thought of green as being a neutral, but green really does go and complement with so many other colors and so it can become a neutral that works with so many different styles. Black is one of those colors it works with and another color to highlight because although black is timeless and it's been around for a long time, we're seeing so much more popularity embracing black accents whether it's black windows, black trim, black doors, or even some of the fixtures and finishes in a kitchen, for example. So green cabinets with some black cabinet hardware and black uh, faucets and light fixtures, super popular and a huge trend that we are really seeing take over and it's pretty beautiful. Speaking of drama, here comes a twist. We're gonna talk about kitchens now, some major changes coming to this category. We're gonna try to run through them all. What can we expect for 2022? For 2022, there's a lot changing for kitchens. White kitchens have been popular for years. I think they're timeless, but the trend is definitely changing and we are seeing color take over kitchens. Green, as I mentioned, is a really popular color, but there's still blue and other co color options, whether it's gray or a neutral tan even. <gasps> Gasp, tan, I know. Taking over and really bringing a lot of warmth and depth to cabinetry. So 2022, we're gonna see a lot more colored cabinets. And the finishes and fixtures are changing a little bit too. So adding more color, just like black with the matte black faucets and light fixtures, that's kind of replacing some of the brushed nickel and chrome that we used to see, which was just kind of the standard. And being that I think black is so timeless, I think it's a great color to focus on for 2022 if you're thinking about a remodel, because black not only reads as a color, but it also reads as a metal. And so it's a really neutral metal finish to do in your home because it complements so many other fixtures and finishes you might have. Great advice. And talk to us about the different types of stone that will be popular this coming year. 
Absolutely. So countertops have always been a huge conversation when it comes to kitchens and they're still going to be in 2022. But I think one of the unique things is that we are starting to see countertops become more than just countertops. So instead of it just being horizontal, think about taking it vertical. So that countertop can actually go vertically and become the backsplash in the kitchen too. It creates a really seamless, really unified look, which can be so elegant and super beautiful. Not only that, but we're seeing them become even more functional. So perhaps that backsplash carries up the wall and then comes out horizontally to create a shelf. You know, having some more open storage in kitchens has been a trend that's been developing, developing now for quite some time. And instead of just any kind of open shelf, we're seeing stone shelves. So using the same countertop material to create that stone is super unique and really brings things up and unifies everything together. Not only that, but water falling the stone down the sides has been around for a bit and it's still here. So again, it's a great way to finish off an island and really enhance and carry that stone throughout the kitchen. Love the waterfall edges, they're so beautiful. Now we've read several insiders share that open concept kitchens are on the way out. What in the world? One of the biggest trends is open concepts are slowly going away. So this is a really unique thing to consider because for so long we've always heard about the open concept kitchen and really having it being a part of the home. But being that we are at home more often now and so many people are there and you have open spaces, having a slightly more enclosed kitchen is really becoming popular. Now, we're not going all the way back to a completely closed off kitchen with a tiny door. We're just seeing ideally that there's a little bit more walls, a degree of separation, something where maybe you can close it off or sight lines are changed. So that way you're still open with perhaps some sight lines and some noises, yet you are not wide open to everything. So that way there's a little bit more privacy and you can escape the kitchen at the same time. I'm really loving that these trends promote embracing and expressing personality. Yes. Be bold. James, like thank the dress. You. Just like the dress. <laughs> James, thank you so much again for being on the show. We always love getting your insight. Thank you so much. Super fun to share the 2022 trends and excited to be on some more. So James is a realtor, you're a realtor. So I'm going to ask you, is your favorite drink proper tea? Oh. <laughs> Get it? That one took me a second. Good one. Another <laughs> good one. Thank you. Well, earlier James mentioned sliding barn doors as an option to help separate and designate a space as something like an office. And you can buy a sliding barn door at a store and install it yourself or hire someone to make one or hire someone to install one. Or you could do a DIY project like we did. And that's what we recommend. Years ago, we built our own sliding barn doors and we have a sliding barn door separating our primary bedroom and bathroom. We also have two giant sliding barn doors above the sliding door that goes out to our backyard. It's a more rustic and decorative way to provide shade. Now, these require a more complicated track that's called a double bypass sliding barn door track, but we had a great teamwork on this project and here's how we did it ourselves. In the first step, you of course have to measure your door frame. The track you need will offer specific measurements to follow, measure the wall space, and make sure you order a track that isn't too long or too short. It has to be just right. Then we got eight pieces of pine wood that are eight feet long with the grooves in them so you can hammer them into each other. We also picked up some other pieces of pine wood, like one by four by eight pieces to line the sides and to make decorations like X's. We picked up other boards to make the top, bottom and middle panels. You have to measure the depth of the boards to know what size screw to use if you're gonna go that more rustic route, though adhesive would do the trick too. Once you know your design, make the necessary cuts using safety first, of course. Rock those goggles, masks, and gloves. Then secure the boards to the door. The barn door bones are now complete. Sand the entire door in the direction of the grain. Grab some sponge brushes and choose your stain. Sorry, I had to rhyme. Good one. <laughs> I just had to go there. Let it dry and then follow the track instructions on how to add the wheels to attach the door to the track. So the grand total for the entire project $420. And that's for two doors. It would be less if you only did one, but in general, going our DIY route will save you hundreds to thousands of dollars. It was such a fun project and process doing this together. Yes. I knew it would work. <laughs> they'll, they'll continue to come episode by episode, but just You're remember welcome. to never keep your barn door open. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that. Now, we would love to see your projects. Maybe you make some sliding barn doors or whatever you create. You can tag us on social media. It's Home Sweet Arizona TV. That's on Instagram and on Facebook. And speaking of sharing, soon it will be Thanksgiving, a time to share a meal and gratitude. And we would love to introduce you to some of our friends, and we are grateful for them for so many reasons, but especially for their allergy-friendly food. They own Intentional Foods Cafe and Market, which was ranked number nine for best places to eat in 2021 across the country by Yelp. Wow, and before they join us, here's a video that we shot years ago, shortly after they opened, so you can learn more about their story and mission. Today, we're in Mesa, Arizona, featuring a family-run restaurant. Now, this family used to ask a big question. What if we could create a place that could feed people with food allergies? That what if became a reality, and the if is still in their name. Intentional Foods Cafe and Market, we're taking you inside. This is the Heath family, the creators of Intentional Foods. We have mom, Lisa. The Nutrient Ninja, right here. <laughs> dad known as Chef Ned and three beautiful daughters. So Intentional Foods, tell us about the name and what kind of that means. What if there was a safe place? What if there was a table that we could all eat at together? We intentionally make this food. We've intentionally researched every ingredient and so Intentional Foods and our what if just kind of went together. The true inspiration? One of their daughters, nine-year-old Sarah, who has food allergies. I have a peanut allergy, a kiwi allergy, and a gluten allergy. Her first reaction at six months old, again at four years old at preschool, and not long after, another reaction at a restaurant. And that was the point of, okay, we trust no one. Her parents, still emotional, reliving the memories. We look at it, it was our bubble of bliss, and then it was popped. So it was hard to realize that uh, it was actually the biggest blessing. From scared parents to empowered ones. We ended up converting our garage into our lab. And for the next three years, they tested and created allergen-free meals until they perfected the menu enough to open up a restaurant, dishing up the goods to share with the valley. This transformational story is one we want to eat up. But um, <laughs> Sarah, I must dash you a question. What's your favorite item on the menu? The Mama Lisa's meatballs. The spaghetti is really good. And then also the chicken salad sandwich is really good and then I like the kids meal. So what else will you find on the menu? Bowls, plates, items like smashed avocado toast, sides like hummus and veggies, fruit, macaroni salad, french fries, and desserts like baked goods and waffle bites. Real food, real ingredients, allergy friendly, safe and delicious always. Now's the fun part, we're in the kitchen with Chef Ned. He showed us what all goes into their organic cran apple quinoa salad. So first thing we start with is uh, organic spring mix. Toss it in our creamy balsamic dressing. We take our quinoa salad, so now we just kind of move it around so that we're coating all of the spring mix. One of our biodegradable sugar cane bowls organic carrot ribbons, and then we do our red onions. Take a couple of sliced organic cucumbers, hot house, and then we do pumpkin seeds. Kind of a little apple garnish, cranberries, and that is our organic cranberry quinoa salad. Yum, it looks amazing. Another fan favorite, their Mediterranean bowl with turmeric chicken. And you really want that, that heat. Put four or five of the roasted tomatoes in there. Do a couple of these artichoke hearts, and then we go back. We've got our potatoes starting to come to the top. It's a quick move right to the grill. Our rosemary dust, pink Himalayan salt. The artichokes, yum! And that chicken, perfect crunch of the exterior while also being moist inside. We do -si do would around the kitchen some more to make one of their best sellers and our personal favorite, the Hacienda Hash Bowl with grass-fed shredded carne. The unfried beans are out of this world and so is their secret aioli sauce. Ooh. The grass-fed shredded carne feels like I'm eating a deconstructed burrito. All of their dishes get raving reviews, including their sweets. Altogether, all three of these dishes are so phenomenal. They exceeded all of my expectations. I would never guess that they were allergy friendly. I would just expect them to be at like a five-star, really fancy restaurant. And I get to enjoy them right here in Arizona. 
You can watch this entire video online, but for now, we think this customer's reaction says it all. It's the only place they don't have to worry about them other than at home, eating. <laughs> so. We always love that translation. Sounds are perfect because words don't even describe how delicious this food is. And Chef Ned and Mama Lisa are joining us right now. Thank you for coming on our show. Hi, Hi guys. Thank you so much for having us here. We are so excited to be here. Thank you for letting us share our story. Also in December, Intentional Foods is celebrating three years. Congratulations on that. And it's evolved too. You've recently expanded the kitchen. You're expanding the seating area with a patio and the cafe, catering and delivery, working with local colleges to get their safe food on campus and a hot lunch program as well, servicing a couple different schools. And speaking of accessibility, Brandon and I love being able to order online yeah. and then come pick up from Intentional Foods, enjoy the delicious grub at home. So we heard that you are offering catering for Thanksgiving. Wow. Woo! Everything but the turkey. So tell us more about that as well as what's on the menu. For Thanksgiving, we're gonna start you off with a hummus and veggie tray with- Sesame free hummus. Sesame free hummus, the dairy free ranch. We have an organic seasonal salad. Um, we've got the roasted Brussels sprouts yes. with or without bacon. Crowd favorite. Roasted garlic carrots and parsley. Um, we've got the garlic mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And I love your roasted sweet potatoes with maple syrup and brown sugar. Why, thank you. With or without um, marshmallows. Marshmallows, of course. Of, I like it with marshmallows. Oh, yeah. Um, what else do we have? Oh, your, your stuffing, babe. I can't believe I almost forgot that. How could you? How could I? Um, <laughs> yes, Chef we've got said, sausage stuffing. We've also got vegetarian stuffing. And he uses the bread seriously uh, sourdough croutons for Exclusively. that. Exclusively. So they're fabulous. And speaking of bread seriously, you can also get bread seriously rolls yeah. or loaves. Um, we and will have those ready for pickup. Yes. And also, we'll be making some lemon bars, some pumpkin cupcakes, some mm. cinnamon maple cupcakes. And Mama yeah. Lisa's desserts are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all of it. Yeah, there might be some last minute surprises on the menu. So you never know. You never know. So keep your eyes out for it. Uh, we're taking orders up until the Monday before Thanksgiving and uh, look forward to serving your family. We love when everybody has a seat at the table. So right. eating allergy friendly and having a meal that everyone can sit at the same table and enjoy just fills our hearts. Oh, you had me at sweet potatoes. Mm, he loves those. You had me at stuffing and again at dessert. You make the best <laughs> churro donut. Yes. Shout out to that, by the way, incredible. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you and thank you again. We're so grateful for you for so many reasons. Thank you guys so much. We love being on your show. Uh, we love you guys and your support for food allergy families like ours. Appreciate you putting the focus on it. Thank you, Brandon and Chelsea. So great to see you guys again. So fun, and so are food jokes. Oh, here we so go. So what is a scarecrow's favorite fruit? I don't know. Strawberry. Oh, good one again. Thank you. How do you come up with these? Hey, I wrote one for you too. <laughs> Check this out. Okay, so who helps little pumpkins cross the road to school? Tell them, tell them. <laughs> the crossing gourd. Yes. Good one. She wrote that for me. I did write Clearly, it. Clearly, I didn't deliver it. <laughs> no, it was it was perfect. Thank you. Great job. Now, you saying road, because you're talking about crossing guards. Now, that makes me think of road trips. Yes. So we're about to take you on one that's going to transport you back in time. Yes, a place where history was preserved. As Chelsea mentioned, I'm also a realtor, and one of my listings is one of the oldest homes in Arizona that's on the market right now. Check this out. Built in 1890 and listed on the National Register of Historic Places, this home in Safford, Arizona is known as the Oni House. It's cliche, but if only these walls could talk. This time capsule holds 130 years of history. The original owner, Sheriff Oni, 
held the position of Graham County Sheriff in the 1890s. Oney was an early Arizona cattle rancher, successful businessman, and a candidate for governor of the Arizona Territory. Stories passed down through generations say that before becoming a sheriff, Oney was part of a group trying to track down Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. Throughout the years, many other families called this home, and now the history is ready to be shared with a new family. This property consists of a main home and two guest cottages. With a grand stance overlooking Central Avenue, this 2,900 plus square foot colonial revival features four bedrooms and two bathrooms. The charm of yesteryear is seen throughout. In fact, many of the original 19th century pieces remain. Modern upgrades complement the integrity of the historic relics. Enjoy the breeze from the second floor balcony and take in the breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains. The shaded back patio leads to two guest cottages, each 500 plus square feet. One cottage currently operates as a bed and breakfast with a living space, kitchen, private bedroom, and full bath. The other cottage is known in town as the Cottage Bakery with a full commercial kitchen. Located in the heart of Safford, this home is just six miles away from Roper Lake State Park. You'll also enjoy nearby hiking, horseback riding, the Mount Graham International Observatory, museums, restaurants, and more, all while living away from it all. Now it's your turn to make history here. And we continue to learn more and more about this property. It truly is a treasure. And if you are interested, please reach out. My contact information is below and it would be pretty epic to own this piece of Arizona history. Ain't that the truth? Now, before we go, if you want to learn more about something you've seen on our show, or if you have any questions, or you want us to ask an expert about something, it would be our pleasure to connect with you. Yes, and you can reach out to us on Instagram and Facebook at Home Sweet Arizona TV. As always, we appreciate you joining us and inviting us into your homes. We'll be back next Saturday and every Saturday at 11.30 a.m. We'll see you next time on Home Sweet Arizona. One more joke for the road? You better believe oh, I've got one. one. So how do trees get on the internet? I do not know. They log on. Oh my goodness. What are we gonna do with that? You're welcome. <laughs> Bye.